the sound of oh. Tuesday. <laughs> Kevin, what, do you, what, what the heck is that? <laughs> wow. Is that, a, is, is that a bat between your legs or are you just having hey, a... Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. Whoa. Hey, whoa. whoa. Usually the microphone's between my legs, but now it's apparently a, a bat. Hey, don't give away <laughs> the BTS secrets, brother. Hey, hey, hey. kayfabe. Oh, another Tuesday together talking craft beer and baseball it's the beer baseball blogcast. We appreciate everybody. Oh, the, the chat's filling up. All right. Hello, hello. Guess who? Hello. 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 I, I can play the soundboard all night. Uh, I, and I just, I, I, I'm okay <laughs> if you do that. It might help me out tonight. <laughs> yes. Kevin, I, I, I mean, yeah. uh, either you've upgraded or, um, or you're somewhere else tonight. So uh, I can't wait to hear more about it. We're gonna, we're gonna tease that a little bit. What do you say? What? What are we talking <laughs> about? What? Where am I? I don't know. Yes. Yes. All right. So let's get to it. Hey, Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, the adventures of craft beer and baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode ninety-three. 93 straight weeks for February 8th, 2022. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. And as always, we'd appreciate if you subscribe and turn on those notifications. Some housekeeping before we start. If you'd like to support us here at the Beer Baseball blog, you can check out our stickers, buttons, and beer coasters on our Etsy page. I did not update this for some dumb reason. Uh, my slide. Uh, wow. Beerbaseball.store. That'll take you right. Uh, you don't have to fill out this Etsy all that long. Oh, my God. Who, who can take the time to write that all out? No, it's beerbaseball.store. That'll take you right to it. If you'd like to become more involved and connect with us, become a Patreon member for as low as $5 a month just to support what we're doing here. All the fun. Go to patreon.com forward slash beer baseball and i'm going to uh scroll all the fine people that that help us uh and support us and we can't do enough without them so thank you so much i'm gonna let that roll here's a lineup card for today batting leadoff is the vp of content development here at the beer baseball blog angelo trinidad welcome hey everyone three quick things during my intro the first one is a non-related beer or baseball rant, but Sacramento Kings, what are you doing? Why would you trade one of the future cornerstones of the franchise in Tyrese Halliburton out of nowhere? I anticipated trading Buddy Heald. I anticipated trading Tristan Thompson, but why Tyrese Halliburton? And I'm not just upset because I bought a bunch of Tyrese Halliburton rookie cards at Frankenstein's last weekend. <laughs> but I'm genuinely upset about this trade. So what was the team? Sac the Sacramento Kings. They're they're actually an NBA team. That's the National oh. Basketball Association. Ah, you won't, okay. You won't you won't find that it's not in your book. It's on your book. So yeah. now, Angelo, your favorite Halliburton is Cowboy Jack Durango's Halliburton suitcase. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, and he has it ready. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, he has his gimmicks ready, brother. It's always ready. And and two things on a positive note. First off, I see him out in the chat uh, already. Good friend of the show, uh, Ian at If Sports Cards. Congratulations, brother, on 20,000 subscribers. Uh, wow. You've been a huge inspiration to uh, me uh, and uh, a huge inspiration to the hobby. Uh, thank you for helping uh, get me back into the hobby. And thank you for uh, encouraging me to create card content for this channel. So congrats on 20K, uh, Ian. And secondly, I also want to congratulate another friend of the show. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught it on today's All Angel podcast, uh, but Daniel Garcia announced that uh, today was the last episode of the All Angel podcast oh. for the foreseeable future. Oh, wow. uh, but because he's actually taking over the Locked On Angels podcast, oh, yeah, which is bro. the Angels affiliated podcast, three days a week. He'll be taking over for Steve Granado um, wow. at the beginning of March. So, Daniel, uh, while we're sad to see the sunset on the All Angels podcast, uh, we're happy and excited for you on your new venture with Locked On Angels. Uh, and I know Johnny Mags is looking down uh, from the sky, uh, very proud of his brother. So, Daniel, thank you and congratulations. 
Wow, that's fantastic! What what great news! Um, sorry about uh, sorry about Sacto. That's uh, that's tough. Uh, much like when uh, they traded wow. uh, Suns traded Sean Marion for Shaq. Uh, I'm like, what is going on here? Or um, when the a, a, or when the Kings trained uh, traded uh, Boogie, Angela. That's more recent history. I love yeah, Boogie. Yeah, I dug Boogie. Sorry, that was, that was a guy. Even I liked. I'm like, I don't follow basketball that much, but I'm like, his nickname's Boogie. You know, I'm yeah, like, it's a great nickname. Yeah. Nickname. Like, yeah, actually, uh, fun, fun fact that was my nickname growing up oh, Angelo no. Boogie Trinidad. I love yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah, my, my uncle's nickname was Bug Bug, so they called me Boogie. Oh, right on. Yeah. I always so, hope we can see you on the, on the dance floor then, brother. Assuming that uh, you boogie down, you yeah, know. brother. Weddings are my time to shine, let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, and and uh, congrats to Daniel. That's a, that's fantastic that's news. Cool. Um, and uh, Ian, we are only sixteen hundred behind you. Um, sixteen yes. thousand. Sorry, sixteen thousand. Yeah. Yeah. I wish it was sixteen hundred, but um, yeah, sixteen thousand. So so what what an accomplishment! Twenty thousand yeah. subscribers is that's I'm fantastic. A, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Fifteen thousand of those accounts are just my shadow account <laughs> <laughs> so that i just see ian all the time like i notifications it's if sports cards if sports uh, cards of my cowboy my jack heart. you know that hurts me a little bit because can't you do that for us yeah man come um, on um <laughs> wow I, you know what i never considered that you know you, i was you so know. i was so entranced with with ian's beauty all right <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's uh, let's go on. Uh, next, he's a field correspondent and senior research analyst here at the Beer Baseball Blog. Joining us from lovely Palm Springs, California, it is Kevin Lyon. Oh. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> the highlight of my day. So, uh, tradition for Michael and I has been going to Palm Springs. Unfortunately, this year Michael couldn't make it. Twenty twenty one, they had a season, but no fans in attendance. So, this is the, so I got to go back this year. Michael and I went for like five or six years straight. And today I went up to the counter, bought my ticket, and that's what they gave me. <laughs> that's that's like, proof. That's proof that you're actually how old we say you are. Everyone thinks yeah. it's a running gag and a joke. <laughs> well, but this you know, is proof that it's not. You know, it is nice. I'm reminiscing about, you know, episode 93 Nate reminded me of when I graduated from high school in 93, you know, 1893. But, you know, that goes beyond <laughs> saying. It might be 1993, but let's not talk about that. But yeah, I got <laughs> oh, look at this. He's so he handsome. It. Look at that. So yeah, I got coerced. I coerced. They asked, and I said, like, Yeah, I'll get one of these. And yeah, your arm. yeah. <laughs> 20, yeah, 20 dollars for the beer bat. Gave up a, a full of uh number of ultra, you know, no one needs to know what the beer was. Right. But I love this. Like, if you can see that picture is actually wearing a face mask on the mound. I've never seen that in baseball. So clearly he's hiding something in that mask. And the umpire didn't think of it. Oh yeah, that's a, it's another place I could hide. Uh, hide I had some sick, some sicky exactly. substances, you know. It's like oh, <laughs> you know, and boom, ready to go. That's oh yeah. I, I mean, it happened in 2020. Uh, bad. I saw batters do it, but not, never pitchers, right? That's uh, that's well. Well, I'm just saying, you know, there was all this the the, the, the sticky substance uh, controversy in 2021. Yeah. Mm, there's a good way around it. There you go. You know, pitchers you take notice. This guy might be, you know, saying a new bar. <laughs> well, awesome. We're, we're so glad you could join us uh, on your road trip. It's It's been a very adventurous one, and I'm sure we'll talk about it more. But uh, yeah, that's awesome. So thank you. Next and hitting third is the Goodwill Ambassador and the Sultan of Swig here at the baseball uh, Beer Baseball Blog. And... <laughs> Cowboy Jack Durango. Mamas don't let your babies grow up to drink Bud Light. <laughs> don't let them drink Coors or that old macro brew. Let them drink craft beer like the beer baseball crew. Mamas don't let your babies grow up to drink Bud Light. Because they'll never know how good craft beers are, especially at 6 o'clock. On a Tuesday night. Wow. Yeah. Here's some. Let him hear it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sent you that picture in confidence. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, no, 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 Ian. no hey, you said no, that the you meant to send no, that to Ian and no, it went no to problem. Michael. Uh, that, that's actually something I sent to Radiant Hayes, uh, toppling Goliath to let him know. Man, I love that beer, but it was private. But no big deal. Hey, cat's out of the bag. Cowboy Jack drinks beer in the shower. Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, there's man, a paparazzi. We, it's the beer baseball ex- blog paparazzi, Jack. I'm sorry. It happens. We had ex- an extensive conversation in regards to shower beers. Uh, yeah, absolutely yeah. We did. Yeah, so this certainly makes sense and very uh, apropos, if you will. Good stuff. <laughs> So good, so good, and and uh, everybody is coming out for you. Bubble pug, <laughs> oh, bubble pug, Ian, yes, Ian, yes, <laughs> Greg. You, Greg, yeah, thank you so much, <clears throat> David. <laughs> oh man, thank you guys so so much. Oh, Cheers, Ian, Ian. Uh, Ian yep, not- yep. yes, sir. I <laughs> was I was in the shower. Yes, I thought sir. you meant right now. I'm like, I don't think he's in the shower now. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Uh, brother thank Adam, you. thank check. you so much, Adam. Cheers. Hello, hello, brother. Adam. Yes, is, is, is the new screen saver. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, feel free to use that picture. You're welcome. All right. Yeah. If you're, if you're, hey man, if the marriage needs a little spicing up, throw that picture up there. I'm, <laughs> I'm saving relationships. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, so good. So, so awkward. Awkwardly switching topics, uh, you spotlighted Bubble Pug. She's our MVP. I wanted to let everybody know she made a softball team, the Mukwanago Elite. Well done, Bubble Pug. Right You're our MVP. Cheers. Cheers. Right on. I, I have a great softball story that um, that I will tease. It's one of the greatest. Um, I, I'll, I won't say like baseball stories because it's softball, but it's the one of the uh, both. One of the best ball and bat stories of all time. And it was the last time I ever played softball uh, competitively. It is a great story. And, uh, and uh, please, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to foreshadow that one. It's, it's fantastic. So um, uh, I might, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell it to you next week. How about that? Perfect. There we go. All right. So let's get on with it. What are we drinking tonight? Cowboy Jack Durango, the birthday boy. I'm going to let you go first. Oh. Yeah, so I, I went into my local, the uh, Cactus Tap Room down the street from me here in Peoria, Arizona, and I said, I want the weirdest beer you have. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of IPAs lately. <laughs> Give me the wackiest beer you have. So he went into a back room. He unlocked a safe. A guy with a zipper mask came out and handed him this. It is a Destil Brewery Dos Vidonia Mexican Chocolate. With an ABV of 15%. Now, like a Russian Motryashka nesting doll, the secret of Dosvidanya lies locked deep within her dark, mysterious, and destil elaborate wooden layers. There's just a lot going on here, guys. It is, uh, I guess it's aged in uh, a, a bourbon barrel. It's got cacao nibs, cinnamon, and chilies. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to tell you, this is like drinking maple syrup. <laughs> In a good way or a bad way? I guess the best kind of way to drink maple syrup. I think <laughs> I've never, the, the times in my life when I've drank maple syrup, I haven't been at my best. So, <laughs> no, no, no. But like, this is a very, this doesn't taste like beer to me. This is a very sweet, like, you could drizzle this over pancakes and it, <laughs> it would fit right in <laughs> wow. i'm serious like, I'm getting I, pancakes yeah <laughs> oh my god i know what i'm having for breakfast tomorrow <laughs> well see there's a reason why like michael and i refer to those kind of beers as good night beers yeah oh, you know. i I, but, I could i could start my day with that but maybe only one i mean two would be pushing it yeah wow. that's coming yeah. in hard uh, like what, how much is it uh it's 50 percent 15 yeah i'm this not is, sure i've uh, ever seen like i don't think i've had one that's that strong usually it's usually around like 13 ish this this pint this pint of beer was 14 dollars before tax yep oh yeah leave it yeah wow that couple over the weekend they're around 13 percent, and it was like 10 dollars for like a eight ounce pour or something like that. It's <laughs> like, yeah. yep, a good reason. 
Yeah, like if you if you were there at this brewery, um, you know, sometimes they have like uh, crowlers and growlers and stuff like that. They won't put a beer like this out there because um, it would cost so much. So they that's why they have them like all pie only in cans and stuff like that. But um, yeah, actually, in the um, in the early days of Ballast Point, when they first released Sculpin, they wouldn't sell Sculpin in a glass bigger than a twenty ounce. Right, I believe that. Yeah, yeah totally. Wow! Yeah, way, way, I, way to bring it, Cal. Yeah, no. Awesome. I, it, if this beer was a, a 1990s action movie, it'd be John Claude Van Damme. <laughs> 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 but not that dance scene, right? That that you always see clips of, right? No, not the dance scene. No, <laughs> I'm talking ripping throats out and like gotcha. All karate right, karate yeah. chopping <clears throat> through doors, man. That I is a it. that's Blood a beer, sport. an imperial. Out, yeah, fantastic. Wait, wait, a, oh, why did way to go in the deep end? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, kudos to you, Cowboy Jack. Yeah, uh, Angelo, you're next. All right, so tonight I'll be drinking uh, one of my recent favorites, the Stone Brewing Company Delicious IPA. Uh, this one is 7.7 ABV, so literally half of Cowboy Jack's. <laughs> <ABV>. <laughs> And uh, this one is actually 75 IBU. So this is really outside my wheelhouse. Um, those of you that are familiar with the show that have kind of seen my evolution, my my current wheelhouse for IBU is somewhere between 45 and 55. Uh, that's what you'll kind of find in the average hazy IPA. But this one's described as an intensely citrusy, beautifully bitter beer worthy of simple yet lordly title of stone delicious IPA. Lemon drop and Eldorado hops combined to bring on a mag magnificent magnificent lemon candy like flavor that's balanced by hop spice a delicious is crafted to reduce gluten so one thing i will tell you is the lemon uh is definitely prevalent in the beer uh, as well as the spice so you get the the sourness of the lemon at the sip and you get the uh and you get the little bite of the spice uh going down so uh definitely couldn't be a more perfect description yeah. And, and, uh, from what I, I mean, every time that like Kevin and I have gone to stone or there, there's actually a stone tap room that's in Pasadena that oh, I yeah. kind of haven't been to in years, but, um, uh, but, but this IPA is like kind of where, like, it's like the intersection of like stone. So like, if you come in here, basically every beer like co goes through this, um, <clears throat> this beer. Yeah. And so like, if you like the taste of this beer, you're going to love all the other ones. But but it's a little bit hoppier than than other. Yeah. Have you have you mm -hmm. noticed that? Yeah, it's it's and yeah. That, that's kind of like on purpose. Yeah, yeah, definitely hoppier. I actually saw that Stone has a hazy IPA uh, that I definitely want to try, um, and I love all the um, the uh, Stone drink by um, yeah. dates. I've only had a couple of those, and I also had on one um, beer and break. I had the Exotic Destinations IPA, which is really good as mm -hmm. well. So. Yeah, they have like the Fear movie lions, and uh, mm -hmm. the, they had the, the Tangerine Hazy as well. I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's some great beers, so but good. but like try this one great. and then see if you like it, and then you can expand on it. I think yep. that's the way to go. All right, Kevin, you have an, a favorite uh, of ours. Whenever we go out to Palm Springs, uh, tell us more about this one. Well, there's actually not that many breweries out here, and because I realized, well, shoot, if I'm going to be in Palm Springs for the show, I got to have a local beer. And there's only two – I found – fairly, I found out there's a third brewery in town, unfortunately, after I already went to one of them. So this is one that uh, you and I have been to twice before, Michael. This is a Coachella Valley Brewing Company. Uh, apparently, it's a West Coast IPA because I had a really hard time finding any information on this on uh, Untapped. And this is 6.8%. And I don't really see much info on this besides that. I was, you know, I've been out on vacation drinking <clears> – <throat> different things all day. So I'm like, okay, well, let me see what this is. I'm like, all right. And yeah, there's not much information on this, but I knew I'm like, I had to find something quick. I'm like, what do I want? And there was this one. I also saw a rye IPA, but this looked like it'd be a good, just smooth West Coast IPA. It is. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. I, I, one, one thing I noticed about this, when you sent me this picture was that they've changed their packaging. Uh, so they have like a whole new line of yeah. packaging Sure. Their, their um their logo used to be like kind of it looked like a like a like a road sign or something like that mm -hmm. and uh so they've they've changed it so they might be getting a bigger bigger distributorship uh oh, throughout, hopefully like, so because yeah 
But one thing about Palm Springs, it, it, you know, and it's it's not really much of a beer area. Um, downtown, there's a place called La Quinta that you and I have been to before. Mm-hmm. And then walking around, and I, I saw a new place. I think it's called Las Palmas, which unfortunately I saw as I was coming back here, so I didn't get a chance to stop by. But I was like, oh, that's cool. It's another new spot. Because this one is a little bit out, off the, a little bit out of the way of Palm Springs. You're in Palm Springs. It was like a 15, 20 minute ride, if I remember right, Michael. Right. Yeah. T- yep. Yeah. So, so, uh, stuff. so correct me if I'm wrong, but the people at Los Palmas uh, Brewery should be watching out for you as soon as this show ends. <laughs> uh, maybe. We'll see. It's been a long day. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I got to see how they throw up. It's a two mile walk. I just got to see because I'm not driving at this point. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> He's had a long day of beer and baseball. So beer, right. no baseball, baseball beer, baseball, tiki drinks. It's been a good day. Nice. Nice. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, my beer for tonight is actually a uh, one that you got me, Kevin. This, is, one this is one I've been waiting uh, to do. I want to um, see what it is. I'm excited. It is Communist yes. Fuel from Connecticut. Yes. And I'm listening to doubt. <laughs> 5.5 ABV, a uh, 39 IBUs. After a year of being quarantined in a small studio apartment in Hartford, Connecticut, these Cold War poodles have planned their grand return. Smooth, roasty, and hints of coffee and notes of chocolate malt. The only thing they love more than a Cold War was a cold stout. This is awesome. So good. And definitely not. Not not something that I, that I would get regularly, but I'm just like, I love sprinkling these in now because um, yeah, I, I, I bought you, I bought you, I bought a four pack of that for us to split. I saw I have one can that I saw haven't tried because I actually have a coworker from Connecticut, so I gave her a can of this. I'm like, you, you got you got to have this. <laughs> and I saw the try mine. I just haven't found the right moment. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe when I go tomorrow, maybe I'll have it on the fighting bats. We'll see. Yeah, it's 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 so good, and uh, it, I mean it's it's very smooth drinking. Like Jack's, um, like my mine is probably the same color as as Jack's, but it's it's definitely not the same. It, except it's like five <laughs> something percent, not fifteen. Five point five. So it's a, it's a third. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, I mean, but it's still this is fantastic. Paperback uh, Brewing um, is where this is from. And uh, it's, it's quickly become a favorite of ours, uh, strictly for their artwork. And and uh, and and, and, the and, more, and, and, and more beers for their beer. better. And more for their beer. Their beer they, oh, if yeah. their if their beer was not good, boy, we would have such a dilemma, right? right. Um, but it's it's fantastic, and it's super cool, and they're super cool people. Uh, we went there uh, a few months ago, and and uh, definitely worth the trip uh, to uh, right about where the LA Zoo is. I think, uh, and, with, and just to give you an idea, like one of their latest cans, I <laughs> hashtag do the research. You want to look this up? It's called Catfish on Craigslist. Yes, one of their newest beers. It's like what? It's yeah. really just a drawing of someone like on a computer and they're getting catfished on the can. <laughs> like what? <laughs> what? <laughs> like it's beautiful. It, it, uh, how, it reminds it, me exactly how, exactly how you described your your thought on. The artwork's great. The names are great. If the beer wasn't good, you'd have a dilemma. That's the same struggle Kevin and I have daily with the angels, by the way. <laughs> <sighs> hey, they're a solid minor league uh, institution. Let's <laughs> come on. Get, let's let's kick. Let's be kind to the angels. They, yeah, they, 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 they got Shohei and they got right. Mike Trout, but the baseball isn't very good. So <laughs> yeah. Hey, Steve. Steve Dolly Jr. Yeah, I, I, Chuck Chook. D will be on the show Who's, very soon, Chook? I hope. Chook, I hope we can get Chook D. Chook, Chook. Chook. I want Chook that, D. That's his gimmick. He always has to uh, have a typo. All right. His gimmick. Um, my, my girlfriend asked, Kevin, uh, did you bring any uh, pancakes back from oh, Solvang? I'm sorry. I didn't. I apologize. <laughs> and seeing today, I, I could have had German pancakes, but I was like, I don't need pancakes. I need a good hearty breakfast. Well, I'm glad I did because otherwise – I don't know if I'd be standing right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get to it. Let's do this day in baseball history for, uh, does it say January 18th? Is it really? Yes, it does. Boy, I am, I am a mess. I did not update my slides, but it is February well, did, did, 18th. Did, 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 did you drink a 15 percent or much that we didn't know about? <laughs> I, I am lucky to be here. So um just let's let's just let's just hey pretend. bro, we're gonna travel back in time to hey, January go, 18th, dude. Open your third eye, brother. I, it, I'm in a time, we're in a time warp. 
We're going to tell you January 18th by way of February 8th. There it is. Let's do it. February 8th, 1901. Rumors of Phillies star second baseman Napoleon LaJoy jumping from the athletics to the Philadelphia franchise in the new American League proved true. So he jumped from the Philadelphia team in the National League to the new American League team. Um, the National League's leading hitter, clearly in violation of his reserve clause, switches to the junior circuit. That's why it's called the junior circuit. Yep. Um, where he wins the triple crown, leading the league with a 426 batting average, 14 homers, and 125 RBIs. Wow. Yep. So this is making my blood boil like it did in 1901 when he left the team. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, why did you do that nap? Yeah, Dude, I mean, La Larry's hat is the inverse to my hat. <laughs> <laughs> it is L Lawrence. It's use. barely a hat compared to yours. <laughs> so for his okay, so for the 1901 season, Lejoy led the majors in doubles with 48, led the majors in hits 232, oh my God. batting average 426, runs 145, on base percentage 463, slugging percentage. Uh, 643 and total bases 350. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, his 125 RBIs led the AL. Uh, his 14 home runs were a career best, and his 48 doubles are a Philadelphia Athletics record. And remember, this is the 162 game season, right? And this is this is very interesting because if you remember uh, when Barry Bonds, uh, Buck Showalter walked Barry Bonds with the bases loaded, not to face him, and actually gave up an RBI. Right, <laughs> um, May twenty third, nineteen oh one, Nap Lejoy became the first big league player to be intentionally walked with the bases loaded. Wow! <laughs> first lethal hitter in wow. baseball. Wow. How have That's I never heard of this guy? Lethal, before? lethal Larry, let's call him Hall of Famer Nap Napoleon to you, sir, not Larry. That's right. <laughs> That's so funny. Like, like, when I had Larry on, I've there, never like, seen that. I just always I've known never... as Nap. Yep. I've never seen the Larry in there. So maybe it's maybe it's his middle name. Or it, it's his American or, or, name. It's his American uh, name. Let's be fair. I mean, yeah, it might, it might very well might be. That's that's probably a good call. February 8th, 1942, at Folsom Correctional Facility in California, the annual game between big leaguers and the prison inmates occurs after a delay when the guards need to search for two convicts attempting an escape. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is great. With the visiting team ahead 24 to 5 at the end of seven innings, the contest does not resume after the escapees are apprehended. <laughs> now, how did this story slip through the cracks of hazy history as well? <laughs> hey, hey, well, you know, you know, we're we down first. That's all it is, too. We're, we're, we're just getting warmed up. We we don't have like <laughs> I've been doing this for a month. Come on, man. Man, I, <laughs> I, I, I I've got hazy history in me, dude. Like, well done, man. What a yeah, cool I, story. I yeah. I mean, come on. We've covered umpires being beat up. We've covered fans being beat up. Handicap yeah, fans being handicap beat up. Fans. <laughs> you know. So, yeah. so you've got pros playing inmates. Okay. So, so I looked this up. Um, so Folsom used to have this thing where they used to bring in outsiders for sports. The prison used to bring in softball and basketball teams from outside <laughs> to play against the inmates. They would simply uh, use the court on the main yard outside um, one building or the softball diamond nearby. They also occasionally brought boxers in. The track was set up to accommodate the filming of Jericho Mile, and it also had a cult following for runners back in the day because of this. So I'm not even aware of Jericho Mile, but um, – to see this, I mean, even this picture, but I just even think that they, uh, they had games, but if you remember the reason why, the uh, Folsom prison blues, Johnny yep. cash, that's Johnny when cash, he did that brother. whole concert series there. Or, yeah. Not, not and, series, but a concert there. And, right. and hey, I can add this. There is actually a museum at Folsom prison that I went to. Oh, is that right? <laughs> and I went inside and I, and I don't remember seeing anything about a baseball game or Boxing yeah. matches, those lot of Johnny Cash up yeah. there. They, they hey, told there was, you it was a museum. That's called solitary confinement. Me, confinement. Let me finish. Sorry. 
And there was actually like things on Rick James. So I think Rick James was apparently there. And here's the funny part. So I'm inside this museum. You literally have to go through security and all that to go in this little museum. It's a small place. And we're inside and all of a sudden, like they locked the doors and, and while we're inside, we're like, um, what? <laughs> and apparently like, they're like, oh, we had to put the, the, the whole prison on shut down. And we're like, uh, what? Wow. <laughs> and I guess That's something wild. happened. It was like the whole prison was on lockdown for like 30 minutes while we're in the museum. And the guy's like, well, I've never seen that happen before. And I'm like, of course, <laughs> the time I'm here for 30 minutes, it must be on to me, obviously. Wow. <laughs> and meanwhile, like from where you first walk into the prison, it's just the open prison. To get to the room, there's little like across the grass, there's like a little like two foot chain link gate that you just or like link chain link. You just unhook it and walk through to get through. So wow. all, that's going to keep people away from us. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. February 8th, 1956 in Philadelphia, former A's manager and owner Connie Mack, 93, dies of old age and complications from his hip surgery. Ke Kevin shook those off. Right. Yeah, it's Three. still going today. 93. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. The tall tactician set records for major league wins with 3,731 and losses 3,948, compiling a 486 managerial mark during his 54 years as a skipper, wow. including his three seasons with the Pirates before the turn of the century. Wow, this guy, this guy. Now, people may say you're Mr. Baseball, but this guy was probably it's, Mr. Baseball. This is, yeah. <laughs> and meanwhile, he doesn't even have a 500 percentage over all that time. That's I, that's the thought that blows me away. Yeah. Man. What a, what a loser, right? Dude, yeah. that comb over is a that comb over is a thousand a 500 percentage, dude. <laughs> solid, solid comb over, Connie Mac. Oh, hey. I yeah. salute you. And wearing a suit, and, and and like you know, the fact that the managers wear a suit uh, or uh, wear a, a, a uniform now, it's like I, I wanted to go back to a suit. Yes, well, yes, please. dude. Well, hey, you know, Big Boss, our favorite manager in the, oh. the Baseball Ham Fighters. You know, let's hope Big Boss pulls it off. I know he wants to do that. He better have a tribute to Connie Mack at, at least one game, <laughs> like where he dresses he like wants, super old he school. He wants to wear a suit every game, but I don't know if he's gonna pull that off. It's funny wow. because most managers, like they, they kind of fudge it. They're actually supposed to wear like the regulation uniform, but like a guy like Mike Sosha, or I remember he used to wear that red. It was like a kind of like a pullover, and then he wouldn't wear his jersey. I think Don Mattingly is the same way, but they used to uh, defy you know the the uniform code by doing that. By they said, oh yeah, my my jersey's underneath or whatever. Um, but so, so they don't, managers don't even want, want to wear the uniform either. So like, go back to the, go back to this. If you're really going to be right. straight. No, I <laughs> dig it, man. I want to see a dude in a three piece suit. You're the dude, you're the skipper. Pull it together, man. Show, <laughs> show some Connie Mack style class. Look at that. Look at those cuffs. So Shined up shoes, dude. Styling profiling. Woo. So yeah. Oh, so good. And he has that. Um, is, do you think that's the, uh, the Wall Street Journal, kind of like Paul yeah. Ellering used to yeah, walk no. with the Wall Street Journal. Yeah, my my, my my guess is it's the Daily Crossword. <laughs> <laughs> not the lineups. Let's just I go with whatever. I, not I was going to go with the uh, the lineups from the horses horse races. Oh, oh that's, that's a good guess. That's, that's a really good guess. guess. He's like figuring out his bets. <laughs> what the, what what ponies are playing it or running in Philadelphia? I don't yes. know what Philadelphia track is. The tall tactician. I love that. He's going to Aqueduct. <laughs> February 8th, 1972 Negro League Hall of Fame selection of Buck Leonard and Josh Gibson, a power hitting catcher called the Black Babe Ruth during his playing days. Leonard, a teammate of Gibson on the Homestead Grays, once turned down a Major League Baseball contract, believing he was too old to compete at that level, was ranked number 47 on a 1999 Sporting News poll of the 100th, 100 Greatest baseball players of all time. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Not crazy. I mean, I mean Tetchell Page did pretty well. Oh yeah. Did it, right. it, it, it's so crazy that there's all this other baseball <clears throat> history that like it's not as mainstream as Babe Ruth or you know Joe DiMaggio. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What a crazy time, man. That's why we need to make it to the museum. 
Oh, I, oh God. I, I mean, that's, that's Kansas city is one of my like desti- baseball destinations. There's so much around there. Uh, I'd love to plan it or like around when, um, when they have the college world series, uh, like around Ooh. Omaha and stuff like that, that'd be fun. Um, yeah. but yeah, Kansas city would be so fun to learn more about these players. Actually, when, when, um, Top Gun tall War and I, we went to the, um, we went to the all-star game in 2016 in San Diego and they had a whole like Negro league, uh, uh, section they also had that and the um the women's uh like the a league of their own type of right you know, yeah. all those players they had a whole section for that too in fact some of the women were signing there too really so, yeah, yeah it was super cool and um so yeah i i i've wanted to go to the, that museum for some time but um it'd be fun it, and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna say this i'm gonna, I'm, it's gonna take 10 seconds can we have COVID go away so we can start traveling to the, go to these places and just be done with this stuff? Like, please get it together, everyone. I got stuff to do. <laughs> wow. wow. It's also yeah. really cool that you, uh, that this kind of popped up on this day in baseball history. Cause actually right before, uh, we jumped on tonight, I got an email from lids and, uh, they are releasing, uh, a they gave us game, which is an all new permanent collection from lids. That's, uh, um, dedicated to the Negro League. So they're releasing uh, merch uh, on uh, specifically around the Homestead Grays and the New York Wrens. So, oh, that's super um, cool. B- very yeah. appropriate timing, yeah. When do those drop? Uh, let's see. I think it it says uh, arriving in Lids locations across the country soon, and it's exclusively right. at Lids. Yeah. Oh, I know. All right. Yeah. yeah. One yes. thing that was a bummer last year was uh, both our brewery net in Kansas City made a Negro League – uh, theme beer for their 100th anniversary at the Negro League, and it never, I don't know if it was, I could find anywhere out here. I don't know if that was only available in Missouri or what. I really would so, like to have tried that. So I know, uh, I just in a weird, weird world, I actually know the guy who, um, who did the Boulevard Brewing, uh, like graphic design and stuff mm-hmm. like that. He did all the branding for them, yep. and he also did uh, Kansas City Royals, uh, branding. So, like, I've always wanted to connect with them. This is I, I finally like in 2019 I met up with him. I'm like, yeah, I want to come out to Kansas City. I'm going to come out there, and and uh, I was going to go see the Wichita Wind Surge. I was going to see all these different things, and it just of course COVID. But but, right. but um, I still have him out there, and so he would. I, I'll I'll ask him about that. I wonder if he did uh, any of the branding for that. So I'll definitely check that out. So this next one, this next one is is awesome, and uh, uh, they've all been awesome. Well, thank yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't think that the, the ones before this, but I, I thought this one was pretty cool. Um, February 8th, oh. 1982, the longest playing infield foursome is broken up when the Dodgers trade Davey Lopes straight up for A's minor leaguer Lance Hudson, a middle in, infielder who will never appear in a major league game. Uh, the 36-year-old former L.A. second baseman had played with Steve Garvey, Ron Say, and Bill Russell since – 1974 now it says 1973 here um which i i think is probably more accurate um uh, obviously but um but like what a run I, oh, yeah. like it could this could never happen today no well i i it could happen today because as i see it we have one two three <laughs> four we could be the next record setting infield boys <laughs> You think, you think we could go that long? Uh, <laughs> I, I listen. The way COVID's going, I know we're going to go that okay. long. Gotcha. But I'm pretty sure you guys are going to trade me within the next six months. So, <laughs> Jack, you really think I'm going to live another eight years? <laughs> Dude, you're a Highlander. You're going to live forever. I don't know if I'm going to make it another eight minutes. <laughs> uh, the the uh, uh, Jack here here's a here's a fun thing. Like, wh- uh, if you want to disrespect someone in baseball. You tell them that um, you would trade them trade them for a bucket of balls. Got it. Um, okay, so um, let's let's just say like um, we're not going to trade you for a bucket of balls. No, um, but but we might trade you for like a, a, a nice pitching machine though. That's sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> how, about a bucket Listen, of auto- how about a bucket of autograph balls from people? Listen, oh, I, there you go. I know I'm the handicap man. If we can do something in a trade to help the organization, I'm a team player. I'm in. Wow. I'll go take somebody else's show. 
Uh, we, we, we're, not, we're not getting rid of you. Stop it. No. Yeah. Stop Never. It. I'll tell you what, if I, after I finish this, I might get rid of myself. <laughs> <laughs> February 8th, 2010, the Brewers announced the uh, club plans to erect a seven-foot statue of former owner Bud Selig with its oh, unveiling no. schedule during the pregame ceremony at Miller Park in August. <laughs> Selig, the current baseball commissioner at the time, led a group of investors that bought the Seattle Pilots in 1970 and moved the bankrupt franchise to Milwaukee. Now, um, this is just kind of unique because at the time, you know, uh, he was, he was an owner, uh, yes. Rob Manfred is never going to have any statue, uh, <laughs> erected of him. So let, let's just get if that it, out of the If way. it does, they'll get, they'll get taken down. Yes. Yeah. And uh, as Greg Hall says, it, he, uh, he's not that tall. You're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so if it, in a, uh, video, I think it was from either 2018, I think it's 2018. So I actually went to, um, well, it was then Miller Park. Uh, I'm not sure what insurance company it is now. Yeah, um, not happy about but that. But they have the Bud Selig experience at Miller Park here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, what the heck is this? And I walked in and, it, and you go into it and it's like almost like a, you know, like the Hall of Presidents at like Disney. It has, it's like that. It's like you have this whole theater and you watch how it's like, Bud Selig, you know, snatched, you know, this team and brought it to Milwaukee. And then uh, they almost got take, uh, they almost went bankrupt again or something like that. Like they were going to, uh, Major League Baseball was going to take it out of Milwaukee, but he saved it. And it was like this whole like inspirational, like 20 minute video and everything. And I'm just like, oh my God. And then you walk through and it has like his office and, and some other stuff in there. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, I loved it, but it was like, it, it's just like, it's almost like this promo piece of like, but see like the man who's like, you know, saved baseball in Milwaukee. It's like pretty amazing. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Thank you, but see look. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but if how you, much, if, oh, go ahead. How much trouble do you think I would get in if I went down to, D back stadium and just put a bronze statue of myself up <laughs> with, a, with like some ridiculous plaque. Like this is cowboy Jack Durango. He's in it. just like listing off all these crazy fake baseball accomplishments. Like uh, for the Cincinnati missiles, he was the uh, like, just this whole thing, right? <laughs> How much trouble do you think I get in? Honestly, like a fine or maybe some jet, like, what are we talking? I, I, I think you should do I think you should do it like the uh like the Hollywood, like the on uh, on Hollywood and Vine and stuff like that. Where they have those those yeah. characters where you like paint yourself bronze right. and just or Superman. Superman. Sure. Or Superman. Or, or, Superman is amazing. You can, just, you can just swap it out with being Superman one day. Yeah. Powder Puff Girls, all that. <laughs> Jack oh, I can finally wear my powder puff girls outfits. <laughs> sure. You don't need yeah. a reason. Swish dude. Yeah, yeah, we're in. Know. Oh. <laughs> yes make it a living jack listen dude i work in construction i don't get that many opportunities to dress yes, like Ed. Girl. yes Ed. he said cincinnati missiles <laughs> <laughs> yeah um <laughs> yeah oh, cincinnati sorry, 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 sorry Ed. cincinnati missiles sorry. yes yes sorry, Ed, yes. sorry yes. Had a mispronunciation dude, yes. yeah, the, the editor-in-chief dude we're my bad bro <laughs> <laughs> that's the 15 percent are talking right there that's yes right. it is all right uh finally february 8th 2011 world war ii veteran and former dodger infielder tony malins uh yeah malinsky the oldest living major leaguer dies at the age of 101 in oxnard california the survivor of the Battle of the Bulge, who played 35 games for Brooklyn in 1937, was honored by the team on his 100th birthday. Wow. Isn't that awesome? That's, that's, that's super cool, man. That is super cool. And meanwhile, he looks younger than Tommy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, sure. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, you know. that, guy um, looks, that guy looks young enough to be your grandson. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> My gosh, I, I, you know, I, you go, I can almost pass for a hundred looking at these guys. Yeah. In what other sport do you see any hundred year olds? It's, it doesn't um, happen very no. often. Maybe curling, uh, <laughs> curling. uh <laughs> tennis, <laughs> badminton. Nah, man, that's solid. I bet he had a, I bet he had a mean fastball. Look at the size of that hand, dude. That's yeah, that's, a, that's, 
Like, like he's gonna do the claw. He's gonna do yeah, claw on top of the sword. A, watch out! Tommy. That's a that's a Baron von Raschke. That's a <laughs> yeah. He didn't need a catcher's mitt. He was just like, got it. We're good. Well, you know what? Back in that back in those days, boy, I didn't have a glove. He had to do everything barehanded. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what? Barehanded yeah. play, brother. Are so, you serious? So uh, back in the uh, back in when baseball first started, you had you actually did, couldn't have anything on your hands to feel the ball, and uh, players would actually uh, have like flesh colored uh, gloves. Like they were really thin, but they would they they'd be flesh colored, and they would get in trouble for it. Really, so you were not supposed yeah. to have like uh, a glove, and it was yeah. Like, what to, to what year uh, was it, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I don't know because I was there. I don't remember the exact time. I've been in the early 1900s, I'm sure. There you go. If not earlier than that, because you know, Spalding had was the Spalding would have the the glove manufacturers, or my is that the right glove manufacturers? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure to make I'm sure it's more money, more than safety. They started doing gloves. I'm guessing 19 early 1900s. If I don't quote me on that, it might even be earlier than that. Because yeah. you got to protect your hands, like you protect your neck. Yeah, that's right. And they used to, um, they, I mean, they used to like throw the, uh, uh, they used to keep the, the gloves on the field. They'd, they'd come off the field and throw them like in a certain spot. Like it would be, yep. it, it, or, or keep it at their position as well. That used to be a thing. So like, Dude, yeah. How did this game get to be this multi-million dollar, like billionaires <laughs> arguing with millionaires, dude? It was just a bunch right. of guys throwing a hard ball at each other. Like that's so ridiculous. True. Yeah, Beers and, helped. Beer, yeah, sure. alcohol, sales drop attendance and then they stayed for the ball games because it was good ball games yes sure as it says spalding you have nothing and like it uh, <laughs> you'll have nothing and like it mm. all right start on that yeah that's awesome <laughs> look we always can use a caddyshack reference uh, <laughs> all right so uh let's let me remove this yes remove that and i'm gonna move to this hello hello, hello. by the way Peter Beckett, the voice of player. Uh, Kevin, tell while well, I set this up, tell tell us more about uh, player in Palm Springs. So two years ago, uh, verily this very time, Michael and I went to California California Wind League Baseball in Palm Springs, and there was a concert at a local casino by the Coachella Valley Brewing that we went to. We went to a concert. We saw some great yacht rock music from the seventies. Including Ambrosia. Yes. And I told him earlier tonight, I was like, you know what? You got to wear this shirt. So there's an amazing song in that era called Baby Come Back. That's right. Baby a group called back. Player. And the singer of Player was performing that night. And Michael got this shirt, which you need to single yourself on your shirt. Okay. We saw this shirt. And it was like, it's a baseball shirt. You got to get it. Peter Beckett, the voice oh. of Player. We just. It is how that's I that's a solid shirt, yeah. it. and it's on the Great back. Shirt. Oh, yeah, Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Come back 77. Like it's punk rock, punk rock 77. Punk baby. Rock. I love it. Wow, yeah, so dude, 77. That's oh a solid God. shirt, man. So good. I had to get it, and it was it was the last. They probably worked me, but it was it was the last medium. So I'm like, oh, I gotta have sure. that. That's right. Yeah, sure. we, like the guy had to like leave to try to find us a shirt. You know, this is like. <laughs> Early February 2020, you know, and we're like, ah. yep. yeah, and they we're, ran yeah, out. Apparently dude. something was happening in China, and we're like, okay, let's see what happens. And, <laughs> mm. All right, so this is baseball card sharks. Here are the baseball card shark standings. Uh, Kevin pulling in the lead with. Uh, uh, did we lose Kevin? I think we did. just video. Uh, he's also dude, I'm I, I'm liking seeing I'm I'm tied up, dude. A three way tie with you guys. I know. I, I it, it, it very impressive. Very impressive. No, it's not, dude. It, it doesn't mean I'm playing well. It means you two are playing extremely bad. So <laughs> that's your game, dude. If, <laughs> if you're tying with this guy, there's uh, a there's an issue. Okay. So here is the uh, b uh, baseball card shark rules. We're gonna draw eleven cards. Uh, have them right here. Um, there are pitchers this time, so we have to pick a category. Uh, but we're going to start at the bottom. It's a high low game, and uh, we're also gonna see who our Patreon supporters are. Uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have each participant pick a player um, that's going to. And there's a special spot on here, which we will pick in a second. And uh, we will, uh, the Patreon supporter has to pick 
that uh, spot. So, uh, all right, so let's get to it. Let me take this out. Move that. Kevin, <laughs> did we lose him? I don't know how he blew up. All right. I mean, I know he said he wasn't going to last the next eight minutes, but I didn't think <laughs> <laughs> he lived up to his uh, billing. All right. So let, let me, uh, let me do this real quick. Uh, I'm going to pick right here. So baseball card sharks, we're going to see what spot we're going to randomize this. And whatever's first, Oh, it always does it too. That's so dumb. It, so I'm yeah, going to randomize cool. again. We definitely want another spot. A three. three. <laughs> there you go. That's random for you. Yeah. So, um, so the third spot, I'm going to put the, uh, Quarter on there. There's the third spot. So our Patreon supporter, whoever picks that, there's Kevin. I think you're on mute, Kevin. There we go. It's been a long day, okay? Uh, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. I'm like, it's my only chance to run and just run and clean up. Oh, gotcha, stuff. gotcha, gotcha. Oh, and uh, oh, I gotcha. Sorry about that. Um, well, that's why I muted myself and turned the camera. Like, I got, got it, it. Got it. Got it. Okay, so uh, we have... Um, the Allen and Ginta 2021. Um, oh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, we're, we're, doing, we're doing pitchers. So uh, we got this uh, games played, uh, wins, losses, innings pitched, hits allowed. That's an interesting one. Strikeouts, Ooh. walks. We have whip, wins, uh, uh, hits, and innings pitch, right? Uh, let's see here. All right, we, we, you know, we also have. Height, weight. Um, that's that's oh, an interesting one, dude. I want to go. I want to go taller or that shorter. Be, that could be a tough right. one. Oh, do you want to? Let's that's do height. What I, what we would do because we have all these random cards. At some point, put them all together and just do something like that, like a height, weight, and height and weight. Let's do height. Like Let's do height. Why not height? Right. Okay. This is a total crapshoot, though. Yeah, this welcome, is. Well, welcome to my level, dude. <laughs> All right, so uh, who wants to go first? Uh, and, and in fact, uh, let, let's do Kevin. Kevin, you can go first because you're uh, leading. Um, oh, no. oh no, uh, what? And then, uh, so who's your who's your lifeline? I, I, I need a lot of lifelines. Ed, son, can you save me? Please? All right, Ed Brown. Oh. Ed Brown is your lifeline. So we're going to start out with uh, Marcus. Have me for saying that. Marcus Stroman. Or so we're doing height, right? Yeah, we're doing so, height. Yeah, All sure. right, come on, Ed. We got to know the height. Uh, Casey Mize, uh, Max Freed, Max Freed. I, I want to say Sean Freed, which was my friend from high school. <laughs> <laughs> You're all Sean. Yeah. You need to uh, major leagues. Steve Carlton, an extra on Married with Children. Uh, Brad Keller. By the way, uh, I can, I can already tell like the, the camera quality is so much better now. Um, is it Garrett Crochet? Garrett Crochet. I, I don't know. Hi, there you go. Uh, is he in, is. And, and rookie, rookies are in play because yeah, yeah. yeah. This is just Sammy, right. So uh, Gonzalez, <laughs> what, what was it? Lu Luis? No. Victor. Uh, Victor Gonzalez. Victor. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is this is it, not going to go fine. well. Yeah. This is not going to. This might go fast. This, this is going to be hard. Uh, on your bench is J. A. Happ. All right. Now Cardinal, uh, Tyler <laughs> Class now. Not this, any of this is going to help me. And Greg Maddox. Yeah, the only I mean, way that would help is if Randy Johnson was on. Thank, the thank you, like right. Randy Johnson. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm Not like swinging. Randy yeah. Johnson and Mark Langs are the only tall pitchers I can think of off the top of my head. Oh goodness. Okay, so Marcus Stroman, he is <laughs> five foot seven inches. Five foot seven. Wow, that's a five tall seven. Me. All right, I, that all makes right. you feel all right about my height. Yeah. Right. So Casey Mize, number one draft pick for the Detroit Tigers. Uh, are you are you <laughs> higher or lower? Well, Casey Mize has to be taller than me, so let's go higher, I guess. Okay. Six foot three. Oh wow. my god! Six foot Six three. three. Wow. Six foot three. So so all one right, inch, one inch taller than you. All right, so Ed's, Ed's, um, uh, sorry, Ed. If these so, are six foot three, you have a chance here. So is uh, yeah, Max Freed is he uh taller than six foot three or shorter than six foot three? 
<laughs> it says taller, but I, 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 but he, I think, I think he was last. referring to the last one. I think he, was, I, he put that up earlier. So let's make sure. I, 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 okay, I, I have not seen respond yet, but I would assume <laughs> he might. He might put you under if he's going to stay with the taller. Is it? Well, he's been trying to put me under the grave for about 45 years. So let's be fair. So we also have to say if it's um oh what if it's a push. Yeah, if it's a, if it's a push, we'll go we'll go we'll go to the next card on the okay. Side. He says shorter. Shorter. Thank you, son. I agree with you. All right. I mean, six okay. three, that's a pretty tall pitcher. Agreed. Okay, so six three. Uh six four. Wow. What? Six four. Good night, Irene. Wow. All right, can I go to sleep? You blew it. <laughs> you blew it, kid. You, you blew it. it, my son. Yep. Wow. This is this is how <laughs> I feel. Not knowing anything. <laughs> this is how it. we do it. Okay. Here, um, Angelo, uh, Jack, who wants to go? At least I got one. I'll take it. All okay. right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Mike Soroka in the Braves. Oh, yeah, Mike. <laughs> Jacob Degrom, yes. <laughs> oh, and Nolan Ryan as an angel. Wow, that doesn't affect his height, though. So, who's your uh, who's your Patreon subscriber, Jack? Patreon. Um, uh, fine. I don't think they want to be picked. <laughs> They're signing off as we speak. <laughs> they don't want any part of this. I want to go with my boy Ian. Yeah, Ian. I'm sorry, <laughs> and and he's he's already shuddering. He's this Ian, is hard. Ian, believe in our love. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> so Mike, Sorka, right. Mike, he Sorka. may not get to you, Ian. Ooh, six foot five. Oh my gosh, six yeah. five. It's a big boy. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Big Mike, this Mike. is still hard. Jacob Degrom. Jacob Degrom, higher oh. or lower than six five? So. Judging by his neck, he's a pretty tall dude. <laughs> like, that's not the neck of a short man. But I don't know if that's a six, six foot five. six you, neck. I know, six six. Uh, we're going to go shorter. DeGrom shorter. This is tough. Purely based on neck math. Six four. Oh, my gosh. All right. All right. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Ian. Yeah. If it's a push, we go to the next card. Um, but Ian is Nolan Ryan taller or shorter than six foot four. I trust you, Ian. I know that you're going to, I know that you're going to do the right thing here. See, si, se puede. Se puede. <laughs> His pick is in. All right. Going lower. It's tough. Easy, dude. Easy. Six right. foot one. Six foot one. Six foot two. Oh, there you go. There you go. You're already ahead of me. Six foot two. Nicely done. So, so uh, this is this is you're not out of the woods yet. Steve Carlton. Uh oh. Higher or lower than six foot two? Mm. Now, what year is this? This is two of the greatest pitches of all time, right here. Favorite, uh, favorite of the show. (laughs) Did you just you just walked all over my joke? (laughs) I'm sorry. I just. I, w- I did this. I was like, what year is this? Like that would play into the height. Yes, Never mind. If exactly. you have to explain the joke, it's not a good joke. He's a full grown adult. At Taller. This point. Six foot so, two. Six foot well, three. Wait, wait, wait. Are we talking height in 2021? Because it might be hunched over and losing height. This is true. Yeah. He might have lost some vertebrae. But for yeah, awesome. whatever's on the card, we're going to go with. So you, you, right. said, you said higher? Higher. Six foot four. Wow. Nice. You make Cowboy it Jack the- has found his category. Yes. <laughs> All right. Brad Keller. <laughs> Higher or lower than six foot four. This guy can't be taller than six feet. No, no possible way. Look at it. You him. don't think so, huh? No way. So no way. Uh, the nose makes me think <laughs> five foot nine. Five foot nine. We're going lower. <laughs> Wow, he's in the fives. He might be our first five. Oh, no, no we, we have, have five foot, foot, five foot seven. Marcus Stroman. We have That's five five seven, Marcus Stroman. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Are you ready for this? Six foot five. Oh, no wait. The tallest God. one yet? What? Right what? There. 
Six foot five inches. Yeah, Why is in the lead? This game is rigged, dude. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, you're still in the lead. Sure. Wow, that's pretty that's pretty amazing. Oh, and Angela dude, gets no easier for you here. No. Steven Strasburg. Oh, jeez. Notorious oh. midget, Steven Strasburg. Is. Oh, <laughs> Cody, Cody Hewer. Okay. Uh, oh, Clark oh, Schmidt. God. Clark Schmidt. I, I do not even recognize him. AJ Puck. <laughs> Doing his best Ian cosplay. It doesn't work. You're not as <laughs> handsome. I think, it's, I think it's Luis. Yes, Luis Patino. Yeah, Luis Patino. Yeah. All right. Here we go. All right. My 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 Patreon member is going to be someone I just sent a box of cards to. That would be Greg Hall. Nice, right. nice. So Greg Hall, be on be on alert. Let us know. Poor, poor Greg has to get involved in this. <laughs> <laughs> Even Strasburg. All right, he is six two, six five. Oh my god, oh six five. There we go. So Cody Hewer is he higher or lower than six five? Cody Hewer is shorter than six five. Okay. He is six five. So we uh, go to we go to who's next? <clears throat> Hall of Famer Jack Morris. Oh. Ooh. Hall of Famer Jack Morris. What do you say? <laughs> Jack Morris is shorter than 6'5. Okay. I have a sneaky suspicion he's not. Six foot three. Oh, you're wow. right. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought he was taller. I was thinking, oh my gosh, I think he's taller. Okay, good. So yeah, I'm out for you. Maybe. Mark Schmidt, higher or lower than six well, foot this three. Is, this is up to Greg Hall here. <laughs> this is, this is up Greg to Greg Hall. Hall. Got Sorry, Greg. Greg. Hall. <laughs> No, Greg, do the neck math. Do the neck math. <laughs> it yeah, works. That, wow, look at that neck. Oh, my gosh, that yeah. neck. Short dudes don't have necks like that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, Greg? Higher or lower than six foot three? Or did Greg's like, forget this, I'm out of here. Uh, Greg might <laughs> bounce, like man. Yeah, he, might, he might be out. Brother literally canceled his Patreon subscription. Like, no, nah, like, yeah, no, I'm good. good. Do you want to go to someone else? Oh, let's see. I was trying to see if he's out there, but I don't. I'm not sure if he's still. In. Or he's still contemplating his. Uh... Angelo, just remember, Cowboy Jack is a Patreon supporter. <laughs> yeah, this is actually, oh, oh, yeah, I'll go with Cowboy. Oh. I'm in an unexpected turn of events. I will go to Cowboy Jack Durango. Oh, controversy! Wow. Okay, right. man. what's Collision. the height? What's the height? Six foot six three. Higher six, yeah. high, oh, six. Dude, that's a giant neck, dude. That's a giant neck. <laughs> that's like a but, Pez dispenser neck. But those those are short man ears. So he's got a tall man neck and short man <laughs> ears, dude. It's Angelo, I'm feeling a push. But you still got to guess. You still got to guess. Gotta guess. Ah, if it's lower. a push, it doesn't lower, matter. Lower, lower, lower than six three. He's six two and three quarters. Six foot one. Yeah. yeah. Good job, Jack. I got I you, you, brother. I knew you wouldn't let me down, Cowboy Jack. <laughs> I got you. See, the neck math is important, but also ear math. <laughs> AJ Puck. AJ Puck is. It was six one, right? Yeah, six one is the height. Taller, he's, he's, tall, he's taller than six one. I believe okay. he is too. Six seven. Oh my god! Yeah, wow. I, knew, I, knew, I knew he was tall. Yeah, I knew he was tall. So Luis Patino, shorter than six seven. <laughs> shorter than six seven. Right? <laughs> yeah. Seven is Randy Johnson, right? What? Randy Johnson, Johnson? six seven. I thought he was taller than that. Okay. I think he's six eight, six nine. Actually, yeah, I think yeah. Look, look it up. I think he might be six seven. I don't want to do the research. What if this card comes up? So you, you said lower, right? Yes, lower. Yeah, you are right with six foot one inch. All right, Jeez. six foot one. All right. Um, I believe this is for the lead. 
This is for the lead. There are Garrett, so Garrett so Crochet many. is taller than six one. Ooh. Oh, all right. Six six. Oh wow. my goodness. Look at that. Nicely done. All right. So we have uh Victor Gonzalez. Victor Gonzalez is shorter than six six. Uh, I think that's good. Six foot. All right. Wow. There you go. So this, is that. this is this, this is, is tough. This is a tough one. Tough. So David Price. Now very tough. You gotta remember, you can go to your bench here because Michael's the only person left. Why would he go to his bench? He's gonna march through this. He's got it. I'm just saying he has options here. It's, I was way off. Six foot. Yeah, six <laughs> foot. Six foot to where we're at right now. Yes. David David Price is six foot one. Wow! Okay. Called his shot even. Okay. Wow! All right, he's pulling yeah, the Kevin it, here. It's like Colin Bank. All right, so yeah. higher. Six yeah. foot one. Six five. Six wow. five. Wow! No yeah. random. So, I didn't. I didn't get it on the money, but I guessed right. Yes, you did. Was, well done, dude. Fantastic. He, well, he well had. Done. He had Andre the Giant ears for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Wow! I, dude, this is I, fun. Michael. You gotta run the board. This is gonna be super tough. All right. <laughs> this is like. Hall of Famer Warren Spawn. Jose Quintana. Super happy Jose Quintana. Is it um uh, El oh Albert Abreu? That doesn't even look like a real picture. It doesn't. <laughs> Looks Jack like an oil Flaherty. painting. <laughs> does. Aaron Nola. Uh wow. What um am I for, what, what, what? Luis Luis Castillo? Yes. Uh, James. Uh, yeah, I always I always think he's Armenian, but I don't think he is. Uh, James Capellian. Uh, and Nate Pearson, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That also looks like an oil painting. Right. Uh, I mean, these, these 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 pictures are so cool. Yeah. Okay. So Warren Spawn. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb here. I, th I he he might be in the five foot club here. Oh, he's six foot. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that's that's okay. That's workable. Solid. He had solid a solid six footer. Neck. Oh, I, I got I got to pick my Patreon member. Um, I'm gonna go with Ian. I'm gonna go with Ian. Okay. Uh, Jose Quintana. I'll definitely say he is higher. Oh, wow, six foot one. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right. So um this is uh we need uh Ian higher or lower than six foot one. And a four for Ian. I know. We're He's gonna, gonna lose the shutter we're gonna lose our Patreons. Our... We lose our Patreons over this, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, do we, yeah, it's gonna get it's gonna get testy for sure. Oh, Come on, Ian, man. the pressure is on. We need you. <laughs> he probably left. No, he said he has no idea who this guy is. Well, oh, taller. Okay, he's that's going a taller. that's a safe bet based on the neck I ratio. Think that's what, that's yeah. Just say taller. Just say taller. Six one. Six foot two. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this I mean this is tough too. So 6-2, but I, I since I'm a Cardinal fan, I, I'm gonna look really stupid if I if I say wrong, but I'm gonna say higher. I'm gonna say higher. I think that he's uh he's taller than six two. And he's six foot four. Wow. Wow. Six four. And, and mind you, it's crazy that our first card was, you know, was Strowman. He's five seven. Was that why yeah. Strowman was five yeah. seven? He's yep. the only five footer. Yep. I mean, we might have been a couple others, but no one's been nearly that short. And he's a pretty dominant pitcher when he's on his at his best, you know. So I think that he may be six four as well. Um, <laughs> I don't know. So. I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping so because I'm 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 gonna go higher. I'm gonna yeah, go higher. You, you can't he, go to your bench. You cannot do that. I can't. I can't. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is awesome. It, it's it says the perfect thing. Yes, I'm going inch by inch you know, off that ladder. <laughs> there you go. It's so true. Not, I'm, not in weight, but in height. I'm gonna say higher than six foot four, hoping that it's a tie and uh or Ooh. higher. I hope he's not. I don't think he's lower because I think I, I don't know. He's a tall fella. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say higher. 
and I'm wrong, 6-2. Oh, oh, Angelo oh. Trinidad ran the table. Angelo walked through that. Nice. With a, uh, no, with you guys walked, with an assist from you, yes. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I better see my percentages jump up a little bit. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's not happening. Wait, what? <laughs> there's no... There's no uh, are we gonna have a Patreon supporter like win percentage? Is that what's next? Oh yeah, yeah. That, oh, that's that's a good. We need to keep track of that for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's gonna what, shudder. One more spreadsheet for you to make, Michael. No yeah, problem. you you have nothing there to do. In your I need life. so much. I need more work. Give me yeah. more work. Yeah. Cheers, Angelo. Cheers. Yeah, that was well done, fun. Angelo. Thank well you, done. boys. This is where you make it up right here. Baseball is- trivia. Let's test your knowledge of baseball. Let us know your answers in the chat. Let's start with question one. Yes. Nice, nice form, Kevin. Keep that back elbow up. Nicely done. <laughs> like I ever played baseball. Come on. <laughs> Three players won the rookie of the year award between 2001 and 2010. And also won the world series in that same season. Who were they? So we're looking for, what? Um, so you're going to have to guess the players here that won the rookie of the year. And won uh, a World Series in that same year. Your choices are. Oh, okay, we have choices. I'll, 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 I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. There's three of them. So, so you're picking three. <laughs> oh, three so, of these five have done this. Yep. Okay. So they've all won all right. the Rookie of the Year award. They've all won a World Series. But was it in the same year as they won the Rookie of the Year? Can you give me those years? What were those? Did it say what years? 2001, like, 2001, 2001 and 2010. 2010. Okay. All right. I'm going with you. I'm going with Dontrell Willis, Destin Pedroia, and Ryan Howard. There you go. I feel pretty confident about that. I feel confident about two of the three of those. I'm 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 kind of I'm with you on Willis and Pedroia. I'm just I'm not sure on the others. Cowboy Jack, Dustin Pedroia went to. I'm going to go. Uh, oh, he went to uh, ASU, baby. There you go. Yeah, Sun Devil. It, it, I, I set he, you up with the easiest question. You know, sure. real life, you, Jack realizes that anytime you say, hey, where'd this guy go to school? You're, he goes to <laughs> ASU, <laughs> right? Like, eventually, I legit eventually it's going to be right. On. Yeah. 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 Like, I finally caught on that you were throwing me like your lob and softballs. <laughs> like, awesome. Yeah, no, of course, dude. It's ASU Sun Devil. Jeez, who doesn't know that? I'm going one, two, and three. Pujols, Bruce, Dontrell Willis, and Dustin Pedroia. No. Two and three of the ones that seem the most obvious. Just a little different. I I don't remember Buster Posey won rookie of the year. It's not, it's not I Buster. know they won a World Series around that time. I don't remember. I remember they had their even years, but I don't remember if it was 2010 they won, or they, they won 10, 12, and 14. So then I'll go two, three, and five. Two, three, and five. Yes, I sir. Suppose he wasn't a rookie in 2010. Oh, well, you, would, you would agree with Ian here. Whoa. Oh, maybe. Well, I could be wrong because yep. Ian's. They all won five. the rookie of the year, so. Yep, and they've all won a World Series. Yep. Greg Hall says one, two, and three. Willis was the most obvious one to me, but I don't know about Pujols because Pujols came, I thought, a little earlier, but or came a little. Earlier. I don't know when he's. I don't remember. So we'll give you about 10 more seconds in the chat to uh, get your choice in. Uh, uh, Cowboy Jack, wh- which ones are you? You said one, two, three? One, two, three, baby. He agrees with Greg Hall. Yep. He's Ian going great. And Ian, uh, both agree with me. Yeah. And uh, Angela, two, three, and four. So what do we got? We the at least have is. everyone picked in there. There it is. Dontre oh, Willis, man. Justin Pedroia, and Buster Posey. I'm the golden guy, Jack. Was like, Buster, wait. Was Buster with the the Giants win in 2010? So Buster Posey was a rookie in 2010, really? Or am I have do I have my years incorrect? Uh, so uh, let me go back to the people who didn't win. Albert Pujols won the rookie of the year in 2001, but didn't win a World Series till 2006. Yep. Yeah. Ryan Howard was rookie of the year in 2005, won the World Series in 2008. Oh yeah, <laughs> of course, <laughs> you know of that. Course. He was a rookie in 2010. Wow. There you go. Yeah, it's it's weird. These these numbers, they kind of like the the, the closer they are, they it, it seems to be like minutia. But weirdly, right. the numbers that are further away, like I remember like it's yesterday. Like I don't know why that is. 
Guys, uh, can I, can I tell you something super embarrassing? Sure. When I saw Buster Posey, just the name on the list, I thought that was a red herring. I was like, no, that dude's from 1945. No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's had a full career and actually retired. Uh, he, yeah, he, he, he retired. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's actually responsible for a rule change. Uh, it's catchers. He got bowled over, and uh, that's why they have like the rule now that uh, about blocking the plate. He broke his leg. It was like a horrific accident. His his career actually could have been longer potentially because of that. Because yeah. he lost a couple. Yeah, of played years. a lot of first base the last couple of years. So. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Hey, heck of a career and three world championships. Yeah. You, you know, that's three more than uh, Mike Trout might ever see. Oof. Oof. Ouch. Hard truth. Hard Ouch. truth, brother. It's three yep. more than Ernie Banks ever saw. That's mm. true. So, um, yes. Um, God, I, you know what? I, I I looked it up, and it was like, yeah, 2010. Uh, yeah. Dustin Pedroia was the AL Rookie of the Year in 2007, yep. and uh, Don Terrell Willis, 2003. Dude. Yeah, Don Terrell was, was like the sensation. Yeah, he was year. fantastic. And he had this big, that big wind-up and everything. That's, what, yeah, it, that's what it was. Don Terrell can pitch a ball. Don yep. Trell, don't call me Bruce Willis. Well done. <laughs> he had like two, three good years. Or, or Don happened. Trell, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> oh, there it there is. You go. Very good. I, I or, only wish or his or his real nickname, D Train. Oh yeah, we get it. D Train. Yeah, that's you that's know. It, I gotta say, Buster Poisey was hot, hot, hot for a few years there. You know. That's right. That, that's that's for Ed right there. <laughs> yes. You well, right. Buster point next to Rutgers. That's why you said Buster. I gotta go. We gotta go. Buster went hot, hot, hot. Yeah, that's right. With the Giants there. Also, the New York Dolls and uh, uh, who's in the New York? What, okay. what are you talking we're about? Getting, we're, we're going. Talk, hey, hey, K Fame. Yeah, Buster right. Poindexter was not yeah, yeah. in the New York Dolls, right? Yeah. El, El Gen it's like El Generico and. And yeah, then, David Johansson was not Buster Poindexter. Right. He's not in the movie Scrooge. Scrooge <laughs> a really fun Christmas film. Sorry, Buster we're, go, we're going down a rabbit hole. Let's go to question yeah. two. Yeah. Question two. All right. Two of the following players have both made the final out of a World Series and been named the MVP of a World Series in the last 10 years. Uh, yes, look up, look up in that book. Why did you ask me questions from this last decade by Come On Dragon? Exactly. That's why All they're right. so hard. Right? I got it. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. No. Should I give you a hint? No. no. Okay. No. okay. I need to see the question again after I see six names. Okay. I'm like, what? Six names. So two of the following players have both, they've made the final out in a World Series. And yes. and also been and named, named MVP, MVP of okay. a World Series, so it's a separate series. Got it. I got it. So, who are the two from these choices? Man, I it's pretty obvious to me that it's uh, <laughs> <coughs> PD Pablo Sandoval and Corey Bob Seeger. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's not, Corey Se <laughs> it's not Corey Seager, I'll tell you that. That's the one I know for a fact it's not. Dude, why are you going to rain on my parade, man? I'm trying. Sorry, brother. Now, oh, I thought I thought you said George, don't call me Seager. I, I'm like, what? No, Bob, uh, Corey, not George, don't call me I'm Bob. like, wait, what? I'm just laughing because. Petey Pablo and Bob Seager, let's that's go. That's the panda to you, sir. Pablo is panda. Oh, okay. I'm going to go I'm gonna go with panda and uh, old Georgie boy. Ben Zobris, good choice. Good choice. Yeah, that, uh, George Weird Springer. nickname. That's not what he said. Just to clarify. That's not what he said. Oh, free, freeze and Springer. Uh, and then we have uh, three and five. So Sandoval and... A lot of George Springer Springer. love here, which I don't yeah. like. Springer and uh, David Freeze from Bubble Pug. You know what? To go different, I'll go Salvador Perez and George Springer. Okay. Lot, so many Springers here. Can't fight the Seeger. <laughs> You, I mean, you might be right Very about good. Perez because I remember maybe when it, they it won. Would it would have been like, 20, oh gosh, 2015 when the that's the when World they won the World Series. Yes, that's yeah. when they won it. Yes, sir. That's the reason why I'm going with that. Okay. I'm, I don't know if I don't need the last hour or not. He's the catcher. That'd be a hard last out. Ooh, freezing Zobras. It was, it was I, I, I do, I, I do feel like I remember seeing Perez catch a little pop to end the world series but 
That that yeah. was actually Pablo Sandoval yeah. at third base. He was actually you probably saw him because it was right. Um, it was close to him. Yeah. But remember, he made the last out, and that didn't yes. catch the last out. Uh oh, oh, oh! Made the last. What? What? What's the difference? So, <laughs> no, think about it this way. Remember when I talk about Edgar Renteria? Like he in the game seven, he uh, for the Marlins, like he had a walk off hit. So he yeah. didn't, he didn't make the last out. Oh, well, okay. in two in 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 two thousand and four, he grounded out. And yeah. the Boston Red Sox beat the Cardinals. Okay. So, so, but he wasn't an MVP. Or actually, he was an MVP, but he was he's not on this list. No, he could have been on this Why list. Why are you trying to make this more confusing? This is already a tough question. <laughs> it is. We it's don't weird. need this confusion. Because I, I, I watched this video where it, it has like the last out of every World Series. Oh, so like I'll, I'll actually, I actually know these things. But this was actually from the New York uh, Times uh article so i actually got this i actually got this right look at you anybody look else have all right well i think we are answers in so why don't you show us all right come on dragon all right here it is salvador Ooh. perez and Corey. don't fight the seeger you By know and angelo angelo i blame you for throwing all of us off of Corey seeger's like i know for sure it's I, not him <laughs> well, the, 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 it, threw, it threw me off that, the explanation after threw me off so yes so perez was the last out of the 2014 world series and the mvp of the 2015 series. oh my gosh you you sneaky devil you and Corey Seager was the last out of the 2017 world series and that the mvp of the 2020 series you're a jerk. What? A, what, what a, <laughs> but you know what? I should sneaky, take salt because I'm the only person who got one. I got one person out of that too somehow. Dude, I picked Bob Seeger. Cowboy yeah. Jack Durango got this right. He's the, he, I think he's the only person who got it right. Sa- Wait, he got Chris? No, no, no. no Wait, I he think he I had he didn't pick yeah, Oh, you yeah. picked Sandoval? I thought yeah, you said he picked, he picked Pablo. I'm like, oh. uh, I, dude, I, I picked Seeger and Pablo, but oh, yeah. he's a San, Excuse San me. That just means Jack and I had the perfect, had the correct answer, putting our answers together. Yep. Yep. Who earned? Yeah. Who earned? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ian, uh, to over to this one. These are hard. I think all of us were. Hard. All of us were. Um, by the way, uh, can anybody name who Corey Seager plays for right now? The Texas Rangers. Uh, He's a, uh, he signed a 10 year deal with the Texas Rangers. I totally re- forgot about that when I was doing this. I'm like, oh, yeah, that uh, he did that in November. Yes, He's Kevin. not playing for anybody as opposed to anybody no, else in Major League Baseball. <laughs> nobody's playing baseball right now, right? Except for the California Winter League in Palm Springs, California. There you go. There you go. All right, so let's finish this out. We didn't get to this uh, the last time, but uh, rest in peace to Jeff Innes. Uh, yes. and, and and look at that. Uh, his he, talk about a funky delivery. This guy oh, had yeah. it uh, during his 1991 season. He compiled an 0 and 2 win loss record along with a 2.66 ERA and a career high 47 strikeouts in 84 and two thirds innings. He finished ninth in the National League in games pitched and became the first major league pitcher to appear in 60 games without recording a win or a save. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so dude, he's actually winding up to pitch. He's not dancing the Macarena. No, he's yeah. not. All right. He had, he had a crazy, it, crazy wind up. And that and, would seem like the proper time frame where he would do the Macarena while he has a baseball. It's very true. <laughs> So, so that 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 record uh, actually f- uh, factored against him during salary arbitration at the end of the season. Oh, the fact no. that he didn't have any wins. Isn't that crazy? Uh, that's a shame. Well, yeah, he only had, power, dude. He, he was uh, uh, only uh, ten and twenty uh, earned run average of three hundred five, one hundred ninety two strikeouts, all for the New York Mets from eighty seven to ninety three. Now, this is a very interesting one as well. We have three people on this list. Oh, three. Oh, gosh. So. We talked right, about right. David Green. He was That's part of right. the Jack Clark trade that we yeah. talked about last week on This Week in Baseball. Yeah. He died on the same day that we did that, so last Tuesday. Um, yeah. He's the uh, one of the first Nicaraguan-born players to crack in the, uh, the big leagues. He played uh, for the Cardinals, the Giants, the uh, Kinetsu Buffaloes in Japan. Oh, and then, Onyx. Onyx Kinetsu Buffaloes. Onyx Kinetsu Buffaloes. 
and then uh, came back and played for the Cardinals in 87. So basically he played, he played for the Cardinals world series team in 82 um, and 87. That's wow. pretty, that's pretty crazy. Great job. Um, yeah. And uh, this is, this one actually happened today. Yeah. Uh, Gerald Williams. Uh, one of, I, I heard a really great story about him. He actually, when Derek Jeter was first coming up in the, in the minor leagues, Gerald will, it was being, he's being picked on by somebody and Gerald Williams like took him under his wing and like protected him. And like Derek Jeter, like forever, maybe Ed will can, it can expand on this. Uh, he came, they became fast friends uh, because of it. Um, he is, um, yeah, he, he says, uh, Derek Jeter, uh, all, he always looked out for me. He ha uh, had 12 brothers and sisters. He is one of 116 major league baseball players and three in Yankees history is to have six hits in a game. Wow. He did it on May 1st, 1996, uh, going six for eight with five singles and a homer in an 11 to six win over the Orioles in 15 innings. Oh my gosh. He is one of, um, he was one of three Atlanta Braves. Are you ready for this to appear on Saturday night live? Yeah. He appeared in, in a uh, as a cameo along with teammates uh, Mark Wallers and Pedro Barbone Jr. Um, on the December. Wait, 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 wait! What year yeah. is this? Nineteen ninety-seven. So, now, yes. I, I mean, there's like twenty-five other Braves you could pick ahead of those guys. Just so. Saying. But like Mark Gruzelonix on here, Greg Jeffries is on here. There's a whole bunch of players that that and Scott Rowland uh, was a uh, he was the rookie of the year, and they talk I, about like Ken Griffey Jr. in the skit. Um, and the reason I, why I, I, I'm just ahead. saying there's so many there's Greg Maddox, John Smoltz, Tom Glavin, and yet. They couldn't get any of those guys so, <laughs> on the Braves. I'm just asking. I'm sorry. So if you want to watch this skit, you have to go to our Twitter account. Oh, um, yeah. and, and it, I timed it. So it, it would be there. Um, I actually linked this skit and you can actually <laughs> watch this full skit. And I will say that Mark Wallers says something to Chris Catan that is not, uh, would not be accepted today. Let's just say so that. Is that Chris Kattan in bed in, in the Mets house? Yeah. Chris Kattan yeah. and right. the um, the mom in the sketch was Helen Hunt. Oh, oh what? And, and and Will Ferrell is in the sketch as well. He, so it, he, has, he, has, he has a great part in it. So definitely. Um, oh, uh, Greg Hall. Uh, yeah. So there you go. So they they're oh, all okay. New York City yeah, guys. That, that would make sense. sense. Yep. It's probably filmed in the off season. All right. There you go. So um, definitely check that out. Check out our, our Twitter page. Um, uh, I will I will give that there in just a second. But um, yeah, so salute. Uh, yeah, come pie, all that stuff. Uh, I, I hate to give bad news, but I, I like to celebrate uh, uh, people. Um, that's the show we had for you today. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. Check out our Etsy page, uh, beer baseball dot store. Uh, here's our social media. Check out our Twitter page, uh, uh, beer baseball underscore. Uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. Speaking of Twitch, real quick plug. Uh, our uh, If you're a fan of gaming, check out our friend Ted Hutchinson, uh, who goes by that gaming dad one on Twitch. He's going to race uh, the Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern in the fourth annual Podium 500. He's actually representing uh, my girlfriend's nonprofit with his car. So uh, definitely check him out. He's super fun and super cool and very supportive. So check him out. Michael, let's make this simple. Yeah. You go to YouTube, go to Carpus Creator is at 430 Pacific. Yeah. And then when that's done at 530, you get yourself some dinner and some popcorn, whatever you need to do. And then you go into this. Yeah, exactly. It's a full night of, of entertainment and uh, you'll be supporting all of us. We super appreciate it, everyone. Um, Angela, did you have anything? Oh, you, what, you want to pro uh, this uh, Saturday? Yeah, so thank you guys for tuning in to tonight's episode. Don't forget to tune, tune in this Saturday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for a premiere of another episode of Beer and Break with Angelo, uh, just like you can each and every Saturday. And uh, like Kevin made a road trip uh, midweek, I'll be making a road trip this weekend, and I will be attending – the Las Vegas sports cards and collectible show 
at the Green Valley Ranch Casino and Resort in uh, beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, and I'll be hanging out with uh, Mark and Caitlin, friends of the show. So, Oh, right on. Nice, man. Send pictures. I will. And uh, my little buddy Levi wanted to come in and say hello. Hello, hello. What's up, hello. big man? Hello. Hey, hello. bro. Dude, what are you doing? Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> goodbye. I don't have a goodbye. <laughs> but yeah, I'll take pictures and I'm going to I I texted the group earlier, uh, these the group being this three these three and I said I'm going to attempt to vlog uh from uh from the uh, Las Vegas Sports Cards and Collectibles show. Please, please do, definitely. Uh Kevin all right, for myself, I mean, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at L O K N L O L L to see all the nonsense I've been up to the last few days. Went to Solvang, Palm Springs, got more baseball tomorrow before I know. I got very when we get home because Wednesday night is when I'm going to do pint and packs, where I'm going to have a pint of beer and open up a uh, couple packs of cards. Last week, I had three packs of 1987 Fleer, which definitely brought back some memories of my childhood. And I know I have a couple packs of 1986 cards. For tomorrow. Ooh, nice, nice. Going back in time, Cowboy Jack. Go back in time, Cowboy Jack. Uh, join us uh, on our Instagram channel at Beer Baseball Blog on Sundays at in the afternoon. We haven't nailed down an exact time yet, but every Sunday afternoon we go. It's live a hazy. On it's hazy, just yes. like the show. It's hazy time. Right. Every every Sunday afternoon, we go live with what we like to call Hazy History with Kevin Lyon and Cowboy Jack. Everyone, thank you so much for your support. If you're having a hard time, reach out to me on Twitter, at Confirmed Outlaw. We'll get through it together. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Always an enjoyable show. We're on our way to 100. We're going to get there soon. Uh, March uh, March Madness. Uh, we're going to take it over from, from, uh, from uh, basketball, college basketball. But thank you so much for joining us. We enjoy it every week. We do this for you, and uh, you make it good for us. So uh, join us next Tuesday for more craft beer and curveballs. Good night, everyone. Break it, break it, break it, break it, break it.